So all of that. And then you begin to see shining truths. You begin to see, well, you begin to, 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 to see what is, what is true. You open up the Bible one day, maybe to a chapter in the New Testament, something, and then you just, you start reading, and all of a sudden you just see. see? You, the, there's an internal testimony, the internal light bears witness to the, to the truth, which you see in words on the page. So the truth is not in the book. The truth is not in the words. The truth is the truth. And the creator of truth is bearing witness to the truth. You see what I mean? An internal witness. He, he testifies on the inside to the truth of what the words mean on the outside, you see? So then you begin to understand, see about Jesus and who he was, see what he came for. You begin to understand what a, what a father is supposed to be, what a father's, the role of a father and of a, and of a, and of a mother. See? You begin to see a lot of things. You begin to gain wisdom and you have insights, a lot of insights. And then you begin to understand things about nature too and about science. The principles, you see your principles that, that apply. So it's very beautiful. So from, from your life, from the moment that your God closes the door on the gloom and doom and you begin to live in his light, it becomes an endless process of discovery. It's a, a journey of discovery and it's exciting too. It's never boring. Always new discoveries. See? Well, so that started for me. And then, of course, I wanted to share what I had found with, uh, with others, okay? And so I went on the radio. This was 26 years ago. Began in San Francisco on a station where they had, like, they, they call it personal growth, which is like, um, you know, alternative medicine and yoga and Tai Chi and uh, herbs and, and um, you know, and cooking and organic and see all of that stuff. So I was, I went out there. And at that time I wasn't a pastor yet. I was just talking about the truth as I saw it. But then as the years went by, I went, I've been on a lot of stations around the country and I've been on shortwave too for a while, for a few months. Okay. But then I decided to become a pastor. So I looked for a, uh, an organization that where I could be ordained. So I was ordained it's in a nice, um, I hesitate to call it a church, but it's a, it's like a church, but it's for people like me who, it's especially for people who want to go off somewhere in the world and uh, help people. Okay, so, it, and it's non-denominational, doesn't force um, any heavy-handed dogma on you. See, other than the fact that it's Christian, so I became a pastor. And I thought it would help to be, uh, to, to be a pastor. I thought it would help. Because that way, people would, would kind of know what I stood for. You know, you could kind of sense where I'm, maybe not where I'm coming from, but basically what I stand for. Okay? Christianity and what, doing what's right and love. And, you know, good, good things like that. And I thought it would help me uh, reach the, uh, the Christian people. See, there's a lot of Christian people who, who um, what's happened to them is that they, they've, been, they, they, they've been taught things, but, and they've been forced to say things, and forced to agree to things, but they've never really seen it for themselves. See, it hasn't, the thing really hadn't begun for them. All they could do is talk about it. And so they, they become very guilty for that. Very guilty because, see, they would have to admit that they weren't really sure. They don't want to do that, so it, they're kind of stuck. So I wanted to help people like that. Okay. And so that's what, um, that's what I um, have been doing. So I don't have a church. So if you want to call it a church, it's a church of non-belongers. Okay, non-belongers around the world who listen to me, see? And so what is my purpose? My purpose is to help you to awaken so that you can see what is true for yourself. 
to so you can see what is true for yourself now the big uh, see the trouble is what what happens to people is they hear something about Jesus and they kind of like what they you know hear seem like a nice man sounds nice and so they go to some big, some church, you know, building and, you know, setting. And then um, something, something is wrong. They're being forced to agree to something. Or it's all emotional. Everybody's getting their hands all over them and then pressuring them. See, so want something from them. And they don't feel free. See? So a lot of people want to be free to see for themselves what is true about them. And it's very important. For example, about Jesus, it's very important for you to see for yourself what is true about him. Okay, that's very important. And if you begin on the path of discovery, see, then you will. He will reveal himself. Then you'll see who, who, who he, he was, okay? And who he is. See, he will reveal to you. See, so you don't need a middleman. You don't need someone to interpret everything for you. Like me, I talk about things, and maybe when I talk about things, it awakens you to, oh, see, to maybe see for yourself. But it's a breath of fresh air. At least you you know that I'm just going to say, and, and you can also see that I'm speaking spontaneously. I don't have a script in front of me. I haven't pre-planned what I'm going to say. I just put the microphone on and talk. So you can see that it's, it's spontaneous. It's coming right from the moment. Right now, it's, it's coming out. And I don't even know what I'm going to say myself. I don't know what's coming next. Okay, but it's good. It's good stuff. But you're free to, to see. You're not forced to accept anything. See? If you see, see something, then that's good. See? If you don't, then you don't. So I'm trying to help people in that way to help you wait. See, remember a lot of times when, when you were a kid, when you were a kid, I'm sure, or you've heard about kids that the kid, you know, says something that's truthful, like, "Why is my aunt so mean?" And then, um, then the adults say, "Don't say that about your aunt. Why, your aunt is not mean. Your aunt is a wonderful person." See, but the child knows the aunt is mean. Especially when nobody's around, the ant is mean and yells at her, yells at her, and is bossy, and grabs her arm and pinches it. And the ant is mean and selfish. When nobody's around, the ant doesn't even watch the little child properly. The ant is texting. See, I just say ant. It could be cousin, could be sister, could be brother, could be anybody. Babysitter, could be anybody. But the point is that the child sees something. See, which is true. But everybody denies that it's true. And then make, tries to make it look like the child is wrong and doesn't see what it sees. And like that. And is bad for saying something mean. But it's not mean, it's just true. So a lot of us have had those experiences all through life. See? And so now we're afraid to go somewhere because you join them and then they're going to force you to say something, to, not to say one thing, but say something else and see what I mean? So there's no freedom. So I want people to be free. I want you to be free to see for yourself okay, what is true. Somewhere God said, remember, it was in Jeremiah, and then again you read it in, in Hebrews in the New Testament and so forth. God said the day is coming when uh, uh, a person won't have to, when a man won't have to teach his brother, or one man or one person or one one person won't have to teach another person because I will write my laws into their heart, into their mind. Okay? And I shall be their God and they shall be my people. So it's like one man and, and God and his God. One lady and her God. Okay? That's the way it was with, with uh, Abraham, Isaac, Isaiah, Jeremiah, okay? Christ, Ruth, See, one person and his and, and God. Okay. Well, 
Okay, so um, so now you know what I do. So um, so what do I do then? I make my radio program and I pay for the airtime. You don't have to buy the airtime. So I'm on a few stations, not very many. I only get 15 minutes. I got half an hour in Southern California, otherwise 15 minutes once a week. I, I try to make it like an infomercial. The response is not so good. Okay. And nobody, hardly anybody helps me. Few people do. Very few help me. See? So if it was some big organization with loud music and big and fancy, why people would give a lot of money there, see? Or some big charity, but if it's just a little person like me, well, see? People don't see the benefit, which there would be. See, not only would they be helping other people. See, if you help me, then I help other people. So I buy the airtime. See, I'm just a, a little guy, retired. See, do a little extra work here and there to buy, get a small hourly wage to, you know, have any money, and then I use some of it to buy the airtime and the internet and everything else, but mainly it's the airtime. It's expensive, so, you know, if someone were to help me, they'd be actually helping, helping someone that really is helping others. So that's what I do. Okay, so now you know who I am, what I do. Okay, and I've written some, the books are very good. And I have the meditations, and so, um, so now you know, okay? So, hope you enjoyed today's little talk. My name is Roland.